Hello, my name is Charles, and today I want to take you through a brand new feature in Google Analytics for properties for enabling custom conversions. And to do that, I'm actually going to take us through all of the available options that we have uh, for enabling conversions. So if you've ever used Google Analytics before, uh, the universal analytics properties, you're probably very familiar with how we used to set up goals. And goals would involve us having to define an event action, an event category, an event label, or trying to define which URL we wanted to trigger. And there was just a lot of manual kind of steps involved with that. Now, since Google Analytics 4 is this next generation version of Google Analytics, Google's kind of rebuilt the way we do conversion tracking from the ground up. So we have a completely new flow and setup. And to start off, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start off by going through the three options that we have available. Uh, for conversions, first of all, there's a set of conversions that are gonna be predefined or automatic. Secondly, you're gonna have the ability to easily enable existing events as a conversion. And then third, perhaps we have a subset of events that we wanna enable as a conversion. We also have a new feature to do that as well. Now, first, let's talk about the predefined or automatic conversion events. Google has a set of conversions that if you go into your GA4 property and go to your conversions tab, you're going to see a certain set of these already have the toggle enabled and grayed out. <clears throat> these are the automatic conversions. So for Firebase or the app streams, there are certain predefined conversions for of subscription renewals, uh, subscription conversions, we have first open, we have in-app conversions, those are all enabled by default. And then for our web streams, we also have a purchase event, which also works for app, as well as the session start. And these are predefined and automatic because previously in Google Analytics, a lot of users actually forgot the set of goals. Uh, and in addition, things like a purchase is something everyone's going to want as a conversion. So Google's just trying to kind of level the playing field and give everyone a set of conversions to start out of the box. And these are our predefined conversions. Now, additionally, almost everyone is going to have their own conversions, which are unique to them and to your business or your industry. And in order to do that, we have the second feature which is going to allow us to mark an event as a conversion. So if you go into your events report, you're gonna notice that on the right-hand side, there's a column to mark as a conversion. Now that I'm in this events report, uh, what I can do is if I have uh, an event that I know is really important and I want it to be a conversion, uh, such as this example, we have a file download event. If people downloading files on my, on my site is very important, all I have to do is simply hit this toggle on. And now this file download, as it showed in the bottom left-hand corner, is enabled as a conversion. Now, something that's really cool about GA4 versus the older version of Google Analytics is uh, previously Google Analytics used to only give you 20 conversions. Uh, they were permanent. You couldn't reuse them and it just, wasn't really something that really scaled very well. So in GA4 properties, uh, you have 30 conversions now. Uh, you can actually uh, turn them on or off at any time. They don't have like a permanent slot. So if your needs change over time, uh, you can toggle uh, certain events off as a conversion or add new conversions. It's simply a lot more flexible. Now, to understand our third way of setting up conversions, we need to talk about what just happened here. In this example, we enabled an event called file download to track as a conversion. Now this means all of our file downloads are a conversion. I have parameters that tell me which file was downloaded, was it a case study, uh, what was the file name or the file URL. Uh, but when you enable something as a conversion, there's not an option to kind of further define uh, which file download you want as a conversion. Simply, it's kind of all or nothing. Like you can have all page views be a conversion or you can have no page views be a conversion. And this is why we have a third option now, which is a new feature called create event. 
And what create event does is simply, it's going to allow you to actually create a new event from an existing event. So let's say we had a user where we wanted anyone to visit our blog. So maybe on my website, anyone that goes to our blog uh, is very, uh, a very important interaction and we want that to be a conversion. So for these set of users, we actually want to actually grab a part of the URL. So in this example, if anyone actually goes to adsworv.com slash blog, uh, we want that to be a conversion. If I go back to GA4, in here, I can only mark all page views or no page views. So let's go through this example to show how we would set up a conversion for blog views using this new feature. So first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click create event. When we click create event, we're then gonna further go in and click create. If you already had another user uh, who's created uh, or used this feature before, you would see them in this list. But since we're starting for the first time, it's blank. So we're gonna click create. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to give this event a name. So this is actually gonna trigger a new event name. So we already have an event for page view, uh, but I need something unique for my blog views. So I'm actually gonna just call my event blog underscore views. And in order for this to fire, we need to set up a condition for when this event should effectively be triggered. So in Google Analytics, there is a, a parameter called page location. It's not available in this list. Uh, I'm guessing that's a bug and it'll be available soon. But in the meantime, you can just type it in. So I'm gonna type in my page location parameter. And then I'm gonna say I want any time as the operator it contains add swerve dot com slash blog. And now it's just gonna match anytime someone views a uh, event that has the adsworv.com slash blog in it, it's gonna trigger a new event called blog underscore view. I'm gonna leave the rest of this uh, the way it is, but there are additional configuration options uh, for advanced users. But all I have to do now is click create. And now, something really cool is going to happen. Anyone on my website, if I open up a new window, anyone that goes to a blog post, such as this post here, where I wrote about all the new features available in these new GA4 properties, what's going to happen is I'm going to close this. And if I go to the real-time report in GA4, we're going to actually see in real time anyone that's on our site now who goes to that page, it's gonna track the page view like it always did, but it's also gonna track these new blog views right here. So it's actually already tracking a new event called blog view, which we didn't have set up before. So that sets up the event, but we have one more step we have to do to set up the conversion. So to do that, simply click conversions, and now all you have to do is click new conversion event. Uh, if you gave it a few days and came back, you would actually be able to toggle blog view uh, from this list. But since this is so new, uh, the blog view event hasn't shown up yet. So what I can do in the meantime is I'm just going to click new conversion event. I'm going to type in the blog underscore view. I'm going to hit save. Now I have it in my list and it's automatically marked as a conversion. So check this out. If I go back to real time, now, anyone that's visiting that blog view is not only going to be an event, but also in my conversions column, they're all gonna be tracked as conversions from this point forward. So that's how in real time, we're using this really cool feature in GA4 to actually do server-side events. So we already have an event for page views and we can use the create event feature to create views to a certain page as its own event, which then using conversions, we can mark as a specific conversion. So it's a little bit different than how we're used to in the old version of Google Analytics with kind of defining categories, actions, and labels. But now we have this kind of really cool server-side feature in GA 
where we can effectively mark any specific event we want from another event. So those are the three ways we can enable conversions in GA4 properties. You can use your predefined conversions. You can go to your events report and mark any entire set of events as a conversion. Or using our create events features, you can actually go in and kind of with a laser focus, pick a set of conditions from within an event to define something specific as its own event, which is then the conversion. And on top of that, you can debug and actually see all of that take place in real time, which I love. So thanks so much. Uh, I, uh, I'm, so ho I'm hopeful this helps you track uh, conversions in GA4 properties.